Ahoy, landlovers. It's me, your Captain Vasco. Don't adjust your set unless you're watching this on, like, a really old TV because it probably would require adjustment. Or if your relatively modern computer monitor is just, like, having issues, like, then you may still need to adjust your set. But, um... It's me, Big Vasco, and I'm in proper 1080p, as opposed to the, the janky settings that I had before on, like, a pretty old webcam. I upgraded. I don't know if it's good, but you can kind of see what's going on a little better. So, like, that's cool. Huh? Had a bad cake, a mean lady tricked you into buying. Dude, that sucks. I hate bad cake and mean ladies. I'm gonna put that in my dating profile. Vasco hates mean <laughs> hates mean cake and bad ladies. Also true. I'll put all of that in there. I have no time for that. Uh, it's real bad store cake. She told me was moose cake and wasn't. That's yeah. See, that's not cool. You can't do that. That's not. That's not okay. You can't lie about cake. I know it's like a meme that the cake is a lie, but like lying about cake is like is like a capital offense. Like that's just no bueno. That's not good. Um, but yes, hi everyone, it's me. You can see me slightly clearer. I'm so sorry. I really apologize. I actually have always looked like this, and you maybe couldn't tell before, but regrettably, it's always been like this. Every day I wake up and I have to be me. But I'm glad that you're here, and I hope that somehow you like that. Uh, we're gathered here today to play Beacon Pines, maybe for the last time. Slightly unclear. I was pretty sure that this was like a two to three stream game. I think we're on five? I think we're on part five? That's very good, Castlark. Thank you. I appreciate you leading into that. Hello also to Solus Void and Sarah, who has a uh, good cake that's not mean or bad. Uh, and also Demolition. Hi, everyone. Um, so Beacon Pines is a really difficult game to, like, summarize what we've done because it's, like, pretty, like, not linear. Like, it's honestly more difficult to summarize what we did in the last stream of this game. Then it was in 999, whose, like, whole shtick is, like, time is wonky. Basically. There, that's such a bad story. There's, like, too many chapters to that story. I Like, I need for the next chapter of your story to be, like... And then the free money police showed up and were like, we're so sorry, you were owed this money for reasons that we don't know, but, like, you should have it. It's yours now. And, like, it comes in, like, a commemorative, like, McDonald's Halloween bucket, because those are just cool. They're cool enough that they, like, brought them back this year, which is great, because, like, another generation of kids, like, needs those. They're very good. Um, hi, Angel. How's, hello. Made you want to get Beacon Pines? That's such a nice thing to say. Thank you, Soulless Void. Thank you. It is a great game. Um, I, I think we're going to finish it tonight. We're gonna try. Um, so let me try to roughly. Oh goodness gracious! Uh, you know, I probably for the for the purpose. Uh, all right, I think it's I think it's gonna work. I don't know, man. I'm really nervous about how much adjusting I had to do to get this window working right when I haven't changed any settings related to it in like the entire time I've been playing this game. Um, so yeah, please go back to controller mode, and then I want the tree, right? Tree, hello, tree. Do I need to hit... Okay, now I have the tree button. The tree button came back. Okay, so spe speaking of tree, here's our tree. Um, in the past, we've done these things at sort of the trunk level. Very little of that is of, of importance for the most part. I mean, this sort of branches us into the two big branches, this point here. Where we're either chill, and that means that we have to go alone to investigate the warehouse and then we meet back and we either uh have to help out iggy uh because he gets covered in like time goo time particles um and that ends up with him with us dropping him and william kerr into a pit along with some fireworks to stop the power of the source um or you could go through the shrine of the silver monkey and if you solve that three-piece puzzle then instead 
Uh, you go and check out the warehouse with your good buddy Rolo, which is sarcastic because he's neither good nor a buddy. But uh, as an adult, he somehow acquires uh, my inability to perform an Australian accent without occasionally being cockney for reasons I can't even fully explain. Um, but when you go down this path, um, he gets kidnapped by Perennial Harvest and the evil bad guy goons. And, uh... How does he... How does he get back to be part of the interrogation? How have I forgotten how that branch works at all? Did I confuse this? Oh no, it is the other way. This is the way that he gets kidnapped? Is on the right? Yeah, because he comes back as an adult, and that has to be after... Okay. So I'm mistaken there. This is, this is the poop branch, and this is the chill branch. This is where we go alone, and we meet with Beck, and we become friends when it rains. And then we meet up with Rolo, and then we play good cop, sly cop, and we trick Hiram Tolliver, which feels just like such a specific name for some reason, um, to uh, giving us some kind of, oh he he tells us the secret past the he tells us that like the the secrets are buried or something like that which is somehow like both the password to get into an underground base and a hint that there is an underground base which is some like real like team rocket level of secrecy um and when we go into the underground base we find these like jetsons style tubes that take us to Beacon Pines 1.0, the big frozen village. And Mr. Nuncreed's hanging out there. He's the drugstore man who's very sketchy. And he apparently, like, betrayed our father for money in the past, which is, like, great. Um, and again, that's sarcasm. That's not true. Hey, at small scale, it really does feel like this camera makes a difference. That's cool. That is nice. Um... And, uh, so this is where we confirm that our grandmother is actually our mom, and, uh, actually Beacon Pines is just the movie Chinatown, if you're familiar with that, and if you're not, that's not a particularly funny reference anyway, so don't worry about it. Was it a lot of money? No, I mean, like, I, I feel fine telling you, like, I paid, like, less than, I think it was, like, $136 in tax She's or something. stronger than my mom. Uh, she is even stronger than your mom, because your mom isn't also a whole separate person, right? Like, that would be weird. Um, so, like, yeah, part of the reason that, that I upgraded was, like, oh, that seems like actually a really reasonable price for a webcam that supports, like, 4K recording. Like, that's, like, really... I would expect that to be much more than that. It's still not, like, for everyone. Like, if you just don't want, like, a webcam for meetings, you'd, like, probably don't need to spend that much. But, like, honestly, like, it's, it was, like, a really good price. I don't even know if it was on sale. But, like, when I saw that, I was like, yeah, I'll spend that. Like, I can write it off on my taxes. My taxes are complicated enough. This helps. Um, So after we, like, determined that our grandmother was our mom, uh, the, the town just basically freezes over no matter what. But in this particular instance, our, our grandmom... Different than a grandma, but our grand mom uh, decided that she was going to yell at the people in charge of Evil Corp. And she did that, and then, um, what's his face? Solomon Valentine uh, drank a potion and revealed that he had been sharper Valentine all along. And then he delivered like a 15-minute villain monologue, and somehow... The end of that branch is like, and I guess everyone did what he said, because we live in a cartoon. Um, and then that led us to our current branch, which is like where, uh, after Rolo got kidnapped, he returned to the treehouse, but he's like a full-on adult. Um, and now we've planned a heist with him and our good friend Beck, who's actually a good friend and not sarcasm. She is sarcastic, but she's not sar it's not she's not a good friend in the sarcastic way is a more human way to say that with English words good. Um, but like her mom is working for Evil Corp and now she has she's she was sent an email that was like, hey, like um perennial harvest is gonna be really hardcore from now on, and so if you consent to work here 
then you're gonna have to be on call like 24 7 and there's no extra pay but like the work is really bad and i've fired like 75 percent of the engineers who work at perennial harvest i think we're still talking about this game i'm not i'm not sure um but uh so like because th that working situation is completely untenable uh, we've planned a heist that we, the player, don't really know what it is yet, but basically everyone's like, we're gonna go do our job. You get Iggy and Tish to help, and then we'll do a heist. You name the activity, and I'll explain the rules, and then we'll do a heist together. And that pretty much brings us up to speed. Um, we haven't done Malice. No, we're doing Malice now. So question mark means it is, like, the active choice. Check mark means we've, like, reached the end of that path. I think, I think just empty circle means you haven't done that choice at all yet. But I have nothing to compare that to because we have only the one choice now. Everything else is check marks forever. Um, but now we'll start playing the game because I tried really hard to summarize broadly what the whole game is. Honestly, I feel like I did a pretty good job, but please don't rate me because I'm feeling very self-conscious today. You can actually see what I look like and it's not all pixels. But feel free to picture an egg, because we did have to do, like, a lot of... Oh no, I accidentally... Oh no. Wait. Yeah, skip to where I left off. I did a whoops. Is there not a way to back off of the tree? Is, is this like the 999 remaster flowchart where, like, there's just, like, a major oversight of, like, backing out is more complicated than it should be? Anyway, we have to get, like, the curmudgeon sure. like, garbage guy and uh, Iggy and, and Tish to help us, so that's our mission for today. Ooh, how's everyone doing? Or is it sleepy over there, or is it just me? I'm mad about this because I don't think I ever got a trophy. For, like, doing all the fishing, but I don't think there's any more fishing to do, and I feel like I am owed a trophy. Luca stuck at those things. I'm also, um, I will say that my personal hope is that I, I think we basically have one big story branch left. Um, I know that we'll have to interact with Perennial Harvest to some extent because they're, like, the bad guy and, like, the whole story's about them. Um, I'm really hoping that somewhere along the line we find, like, a second giant melon. Because, and I can't explain to you why I have this sensation, but I really feel like that one melon is lonely and that, like, two melons, like, together would be, like, better. Like, everyone would like that more. But again, it's just this, like, weird sense I have. Actually, you know, I don't know if the game's gonna stop me, but y you may be new here, so I might as well just go point out what I mean when I'm talking about that particular melon. Because I, I think that's going to be pretty important to the story. And if it's not, then I may have overestimated the quality of this game's story. I don't know. Just just saying. Yeah, right? Like, I feel like that would be an improvement. Like, this one's very good. Don't get me wrong. I'm quite happy with this very big melon. But, like, I feel like we could, you know... One is the loneliest number. Or whatever. Alright, so I guess I have to go find Junkyard Man and the Beagle Boys which are nicknames I've coined just now for characters whose names I don't remember. Hey, it's Junkyard Man. Hey, Jeff. What can I do for you? Well, I know how much you hate Perennial Harvest. Hate's a strong word. Oh, sorry, I mean, I didn't say it was the wrong word. Uh, gotcha. So we're gonna break into their headquarters, and I thought you might be Jeff able to help. Jeff out a long snicker. Can I even imagine what a wheezed snicker sounds like? <laughs> yeah, it seems bad. I don't think I want that. Yeah, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be greedy. I'm with you, Sarah. Like, two melons? Yeah, like, two melons right next to each other. And, like, the proximity is important because then, you know, you can smack both of them at the same time. And, like, it's just very natural to want to smack the large melon. Hee <laughs> hee. You see, I knew you kids were all right. Great, so the you'll help? Jeff's face drained instantly. Not a chance. But you... Give me one good reason I should risk my hide aiding and abetting Looking you rascals. into the sullen eyes of his would-be accomplice, Luca blurted out the first word that came to mind. Banana hammock! 
Okay, well, I'm pretty sure that I know the correct answer, and it's crooked. But I feel like I have to try all of these. And I feel like I have to start with this one, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all crap. I still ain't helping. Ain't that some crap. <laughs> Luca wasn't ready to give up so easily. He shouted out again. I'd... Jeff's Hi. brow perked up. What'd you say? Go ahead and hide then. Luca carried on with vigor. Let a bunch of kids do what needs to be done. Jeff's They're not afraid. Faded with a sigh. Say what you will about old Jeff, and they all do. But you'll never hear him say I One hid from good nothing. One stomp of the foot was all Jeff needed to drive his point home. What was it you kids needed? Some sort of disguise? I got just the thing. And while we're at it, that crate should come in handy. We needed this man's help to do something we could probably do ourselves and ask to borrow a crate. This ain't gonna be free, you know. I'm thinking five bags of sour gobs ought to cover it. Put it on my Luke tab. offered out his open hand to seal the deal. With a firm and dusty grip, Jeff reciprocated. Swing by first thing in the morning. Wow, uh, uh, like, I really didn't figure that, like, hide, like, the first badge that's accomplished virtually nothing was gonna do it. I, I thought I'd be able to go through most of those and there'd be one right answer. And if that is true, I definitely wouldn't have pegged hide as the answer. Really wanted to, really wanted to go with Crooked and get his response to that, because I feel like he would have been really excited about it. But I guess we're already making progress or whatever. How does one have a dusty grip? I don't know, we have some really interesting... Instances of like poetic license oh, in this God. game that are kind of hard to imagine sometimes like that Wheezing snicker like that seems pretty hard to picture Hey Tish look who it is Luca are you here to try and tickle us to death again? Now see I'm really nervous cuz like I got to get the help of both of these folks and, you know, we had sort of a, a version of the story where we helped out Luca and we got to know him, or sorry, Iggy, Iggy we're Luca. Uh, we helped out Iggy a bit and we kind of got to know him better and, like, this kind of a decent person in there. But, like, I just don't know what I expect Tish to say if we ask her for a favor. I mean, she could say anything. If only we could get, like, an affirmation from her. Like, if she could simply say, like, yup, that would be, like, a huge help to us. But, like, virtually any response could come from Tish. We just don't know her that well. Look, just hear me out. raised an eyebrow suspiciously. We're listening. Iggy, I know we've both been giant bags of... I mean, this time, I think this probably is the right answer. Did I say malice? Which is like where I also I mean, I feel like I feel like it's a weird point in the game to start using the badges in this fashion. The the charms, I think, is the actual technical term. Like we're just pretty late in the game. and It's like, yeah, now they're like dialogue options instead of like big story points. We've been big bags of malice to each other. Malice? Wow, Tish, smart guy here with his smart guy words thinks he's impressing us. Scram, we ain't interested. Yeah, it's, it's not shocking to me that that doesn't. Tried again. Yeah, I mean, clearly, it's, 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 it's the... We've been, we've been really crappy to each other. Shrug. You're not wrong. But lately, life has been kind of... game trying to get me to say that life is strange I, I mean i'd rather not strange, you know? the point mm -hmm. things happen weird around here so i'm offering a truce and asking for your help what do you say we this time hide is clearly not correct <laughs> I just, I want to see how dumb it is. 
hide our hostilities, at least for now. Hide? We ain't no cowards. Buzz off! And I have to do the whole thing? Yeah. That's, what a weird... Like, I just don't, like, get this. Like, this isn't, like, bad or, like, a huge problem. It just feels like we're trying to, like, do, like, a new game mechanic. And I don't feel like it, like, adds Baby a ton. Gave a reluctant shrug. Castle Arg says, that game series is one I've tried hard to forget. Thank you, Castle Arg. Thank you. Most people in chat uh, really ardently want me to play Life is Strange 2. And I'm really concerned that by doing that, I will also give up on life. Wish it was like, yeah, like that, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like that. Like, again, it's not that I'm saying like, oh, this is so stupid. Like, I hate this mechanic where we're using the badges this way. Like, it's not that it's a problem. It's just that we're like already like at least like 75% through the game or something. And like now we're doing this. Like, honestly, if we were doing this the whole time, I'd feel a little bit better about how little use we actually got out of the badges throughout the game. Iggy considered the point. I'm saying that we break our hostilities. That's not English good either. That's not right. I suggest we break our hostilities, you know, like a normal person would do. We do like breaking things. Even if a truce, truce means less breaking things. What if I told you there was a way to have a truce and break stuff? Eh, yeah, go on. I need you to cause a distraction so I can sneak into Perennial Harvest HQ. A wild-eyed grin spread across Iggy's face. My, 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 Luca Van Horn, I'm impressed. And after all this is done, maybe you and Tish can come hang out at the treehouse sometime. Over to Tish, who nodded in agreement. Fine. Not because we want to see a crappy treehouse. We just like to cause chaos. Night, Luca was off. Did you hear that, Tish? Up at Tish with a smile. He invited us to hang out at the treehouse. Ran down Tish's cheek. Oh. <laughs> What I expected was for there to be some phrasing such that Tish's response would eventually just be nope. Would just be like, nope. I never expected this day to come. How wonderful. <laughs> Tish is very good. Tish Chapter might be second seven. best character. Beck clearly still best character, but Tish has been very good all along. Into the hive. A good heist requires preparation. And thorough preparation takes time. Something they had precious little of. So far, everything was in order. Jeff, Iggy, and Tish all agreed to do their part. Beck radioed Luca that night with a simple and covert message. We are locked and loaded on my end. And Rolo, after a lengthy confession, managed to persuade Roxy and Fitz to help. He stowed away in mission control for the night to avoid attracting attention. Rolo, being uniquely suited for the role, would be the first to breach perennial harvest. The outfit provided by Jeff wasn't perfect, but a convincing disguise is 10% wardrobe, 90% confidence. If there is one thing that Rolo has in abundance, it's confidence that he should not possess. But I think I appreciate the fact that we're taking the Blades in the Dark approach and we're just, we're playing the feud. We're just in the thing. We don't really know what the plan is, but we'll probably have a flashback later if we need to, and it will only cause me, like, a little bit of stress. Rolo took a few vigorous breaths and shook out his arms. Just stay calm, Rolo. You can do this. Hello, it's me, Rolo, from Suspicious Deliveries. I mean, not Suspicious Deliveries. <laughs> uh, got your delivery right here. A, a delivery? Hmm, I don't have anything in my notes about a delivery. One moment. I'm so sorry, but there's no delivery scheduled for this morning. He had right? to think quick. It's because this goes directly to the founder. He asked that it be kept secret. Shh, secret package. Sighed, adjusting his tool belt. You know how the founder could be. 
I suppose we can leave this one off the records. Don't worry, there's not several children in this box or With nothing. stroke of his mustache, Rolo proceeded into the perennial harvest headquarters. Harvest awaits! Did you hear for the founder? Oh, I didn't hear anything about... Yeah, this is a need-to-know kind of thing. Um, I'll he just check... and flipped through the pages of his clipboard. This goes directly to the founder. I don't have time to fill you in. Oh, I see. If you could just complete this Rolo form... interrupted with urgency in his voice. Every time with the forms. Look, if you want to explain to the founder why I'm late... Well, it's your funeral. I'm sorry. What did you say your name was again? Rolo I'm... Panicked. A harvest awaits! Sir, that's a restricted area. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> oh dear, that's not going well. Ready to, to light this candle, Tish? Oh, yep. Suck on this perennial ham fist. Oh, I zinged him so good, Tish. Did you hear that? Oh, yep. What the was that? The was enough for Rollo to regain his confidence. Just open the door, mate. Got a job to do. Fumbled around in a frenzy. I... I should check on that noise. Oh, come on. Put me in already. Okay, okay. <laughs> Ew. It was close. Our harvest awaits. Hey, I figure. When in doubt, stick with the classics. That was a close one. But I guess technically you pulled it off. D minus for effort, though. I mean, frankly, I'm ashamed to know you, Rolo. Alright, everyone knows what to do? Yep, deep engineering is to the north. I'll go with Beck. In case she needs some muscle. I'll head east to the Founder's office. You two be safe. Anything in this box that I need? That's odd. There's not even any cups for water. Is it a secret entrance? Now, they said that they have a map, but I never saw the map. Am I supposed to know where to go, or am I supposed to explore haphazardly? Oh, hang on. This whole place just feels fake. Of all things, a fake plant? I guess that is a little weird for a company that ostensibly, like, does stuff with, like, growing crops or whatever. Solomon stopped in his tracks. See, okay, I just want to touch real briefly. I talked a lot last week about how... It's not that I think the story is bad or that I don't like it, but I feel like there's something about the way... Th like, the manner in which this game tells its story that I think undercuts some of its cool moments. It's not too dissimilar from, like, my feelings about the, the first Somnium Files game, where it's like, I actually think the story overall is quite good, but, like... It really ends up, like, pulling its punches for, like, the, the cool, dramatic reveals. Like, in order to get to this point, you have to have already seen the evil monologue where Solomon takes the potion and becomes, like, the adult evil founder. And, like, even though it, like, there were signs that already pointed to that, like, there's, like, no mystery left here. Like, there's this weird dramatic irony where, like, Luca runs into Solomon and he's like, why is Solomon here? But, like... We already know. So, like, whatever this conversation is, it's gonna be, like, pretty pointless. Solomon stopped in his tracks. Luca? What are you doing here? It's a long story. Are you a okay? confusion flashed across Solomon's face. His words rushed out dramatically. No, I am most certainly not okay. Someone, some 
strange people grabbed me and... Were they in hazmat suits? Yes, how did you know? They brought me here and locked me up and when they were distracted I ran. Dang, okay, you should stick with me. That's not going to be a problem at all. There's no reason for anyone to Solomon's worry. Solomon's facade briefly faltered. We? Yeah, Rolo and Beck are headed to deep engineering. Oh, good. This is good. Thank heavens you've found me. We've got to get out of here. We can't leave just yet. But they'll catch us again. We've gotta do something first. When you were running, did you happen to see a door marked Founder? Founder? Why are you looking for him? I'm not. I just need to get into that office. Now that you mention it, I do think I saw a door that said Founder. It was just down Luca this way. to notice a plaque above the door. Office of the Founder, colon. Knocking comes with a consequence. Oh, here it is, in exactly the opposite direction of where you just in instructed me to go. S so it is. It's pretty lucky that I ran into you, or else I might have missed it. Hmm, truly fortunate. Tried to handle. Solomon ah. leaned forward to examine the mechanism. Regrettably, it does seem to, seem to be some sort of electric lock. I don't see how you, how we could possibly defeat a lock Luca like smiled that. And looked at his watch. Let's just wait a minute. Sort of funny business you're up to, but I she like it. A quick hat tip and ambled off with a whistle. <laughs> the light on the keypad changed from red to green. All right, like I'm totally willing to suspend my disbelief that just like poking, like a, a like a, a circuit box or a. a circuit breaker or, or just some sort of electrical juncture on the outside of the building will disrupt the system enough for us to gain access to this electrically locked room but why would there still be a light on it if we like disabled the power to it shouldn't it just sort of go dead and then maybe like be openable like why would it still be lit how did you do that it's good to have friends Quick, let's get inside before someone spots us. Like, I don't know, the founder. It'd be really bad if that happened. <sighs> Luca switched on his walkie-talkie. Rolo, I'm in. As expected, there's a control panel. Great timing. We're stuck at a locked door marked number 24,601. Need you to get us through. What if someone catches us? We should get out of here. I'm not leaving my friends, Solomon. On the computer screen, a green cursor blinked in a password field. I know this. Is, this, is it eight digits? Surely you don't have a way to get around the password. Luca hmm. pecked out his best guess. Underground secrets. If this works, I'll be a little mad about it. The screen blinked to life. Columns of green numbers glowed on a black background. Setting aside the fact that I'm increasingly confused as to the nature of whatever... What's her name? I want to say it's like Ilya, but it's not Ilya. The... The, the, the albino, like, ferret mom? Whatever she did with that shovel to disable the electricity, like, leaves all the important electrical devices on and connected? Like, what did she actually do? Was, is it not so much a shovel as it is like a sonic shovel, equivalent to the sonic screwdriver, which just kind of does whatever? Is that what we're talking about? But also, like, why would the password to get to that underground bunker be used here, too? At that rate, why wouldn't the password just be 1234, the same as Solomon's luggage? How did you just guess that? 
Oh, it's this absurd password Rolo heard when he was down here before. It's funny how someone arrogant enough to call themselves the founder uses such a basic password. Or they were thinking several moves ahead, not expecting anyone to guess something so simple. These villain types always end up outsmarting themselves. So this is the this is the timeline where like Luca gets murdered for insolence. Is that correct? Am I interpreting that correctly? Solomon's jaw clenched into a half smile. Your powers of deduction are as impressive as your luck. Luca quickly scanned the columns for number two four six zero one. Definitely not aware of his surroundings or anything. Good work, Luca. You should definitely be in charge of this mission. Rolo, I think this should do it. Bingo, bango, doors open, Luca. You never fail to impress. What is that slippery lout even doing down here? We have a friend whose mom is in trouble. We're here to get her out. I see. Okay, Luca, I think we're close. Next door's marked number 13,806. Hey, how big is this building? This is like a pretty small town, and there's like 24,000 doors or something. Like, what? It, again, is it just Doctor? Is this, is, is the heist like a bad Doctor Who episode? And like, we're in like an enemy TARDIS or something, and this building is just huge on the inside? Once again, Luca scrutinized the numbers on the screen. In that moment of distraction, Solomon reached forward and pressed a large red button. For a second, I thought he was going to take us out with, like, an axe or a knife or something. Maybe this one opens the lock. Prep, we've got company. Luca must go faster. One sec, I can't think with the loud but intermittent noise. He skimmed the screen with his finger. Here it is. Number 13806. Go, go, go! Curse these fumbling hands. My apologies, Luca. Don't beat yourself up. I know you were trying to help and definitely aren't the founder. It would be a shocking revelation were that to be true. Why are they going like the same way we went? Oh, man, no water cups. Rollo. Rolo, are you okay? Rolo, come in! Mr. Kerr approached with a sneer and spoke into his walkie-talkie. You can turn off the alarms, they're trapped. With self-satisfaction, he called into the hallway. That, my dears, is a dead end. Nowhere to run. Rolo, where are you? Do you see Scooby-Doo? He also, too, is lost! Yeah, I think we lost him. Making our way back to Nelly's office. Okay, you two rabble-rousers are coming with us. Nope. Make a break for it. Did that little jerk just kick me? Don't stand there after them. Okay, I think that worked. Roxy and Fix, Fitz have led him on a wild goose chase. I'm having trouble following what just happened. Like I said, it's good to have friends. Well, how long do you think Roxy can distract them? How long can Roxy keep someone so pissed off they can't see straight? Let's just say we've got plenty of time. Entering Nelly's office now. Mom. Oh, honey, what did you do with your hair? I thought you'd be happy. I finally used the young chemist's lab kit. You sure have a knack for making me incredibly proud in the most frustrating ways. Need to get you out of here. We? Who is your adult friend? Oh, I'm not an adult. Adult. Ever heard of a growth spurt? Had me more of a growth spew! In that charming. 
No, that's Nellie not possible. Over to examine his teeth. Substantial banding on the enamel of the molars consistent with the Tempest Thiclamine exposure. Is that what you call the gunk they forced me to drink? You drank it? Oh, oh, oh no. They told me it was only being tested on plants. Oh, Beck, sweetie, I, I promise I didn't know. Mom, what the heck is going on here? I was brought here to work on the discovery of a lifetime. A novel chemical compound was discovered under Beacon Pines in a wellspring they called the Source. They named it Tempest Liquamine. It pulls energy from its surroundings in order to fundamentally alter matter's relationship to time. It, it really is basically Ice-9, right? I guess a weird science substance that, like, changes ice properties around it and has a weird link to time. Anyway. It was the secret to Valentine's fertilizer. They harvested the source, infusing small amounts of Tempest Liquamine into the product. It worked wonders, drastically accelerating plant growth. It's Ice-9! <laughs> it's... It's, that's like a, uh, it's like Armin clone. It's is is like a wordplay, but it's it's also just deceptive. It's good. Crops would ha would be ready to harvest in a fraction of the time, but it led to complications. The foul harvest. Perennial harvest came in to clean up the mess to succeed where Valentine failed, but Tempest Thiquamine is rebellious. Rebellious. You can think of it as a manifestation of change itself. It's volatile by its very nature. So the more you try to do it to force it to do a specific thing? The more it resists, yes. I can relate to that. My role was to finish the work of my predecessor, Dr. Prescott. Harnessing Tempest Liquamine to reliably manipulate an organism's age. Just imagine how many people we could feed. Mr. Kerr was very insistent that we achieve a successful result before today's festival. But you didn't, Nelly right? Sighed. You didn't, right? You know how much I love a good puzzle. I poured myself into the problem. It wasn't long until I discovered oddities in Dr. Prescott's notes. Oddities? They contained some Obvious errors, mistakes that someone of his reputation would never, ever make. So I fixed them and... Now I get to replace my entire wardrobe. I really am truly sorry. Yeah, those clothes were all aiming downs anyway. <laughs> Sounds like Dr. Prescott figured it out, got cold feet, and intentionally sabotaged his own work. I had considered that possibility, but clearly not until after it was much too late. I've sent a letter asking him to clarify his thinking, but I don't think it reached him in that dumpster where you found his corpse. Mom, Dr. Prescott is dead. Kerr had him killed. Nunny? I overheard them talking about it on the radio. Whoa, on the radio. It's why we gotta get you out of here. I just... Like now. Wait, the vial. I finally solved the chemical equation, allowing direct control of aging. Mr. Kerr picked it up just before you came. All the more reason we gotta hightail it. Luca, we got Dr. Modewill heading your way now. Roger that. Be careful. This really is coming across like a like a Blades in the Dark heist, which is kind of fun. Um, just like any time there's like a reasonable obstacle, something incredibly stupid happens. It's good. I like it. I like this. All right, everything's on track. And what is your plan for escape? We'll go over everything when they get here. In the meantime, maybe we can dig up some more info. Oh, is that what we're doing? Gosh, it sure is good that the founder isn't here to know that we're doing that. Again, it would be quite the hardship for us if something like that were to occur. But again, we're in great shape because that's definitely not happening. Malice 80 proof whiskey. What a peculiar choice of words. A hard drink for a hard man. That's two different badge words out of like a dozen that exist. That's odd. 
Wow, even his alcohol Solomon is arrogant. Solomon muttered inaudibly. Oh, I should just smother you right now. What's that? I said, I shouldn't bother you right now. Don't be silly, you're no bother at all. Is is this is this him with the other founders of the nonary game since he's been harvesting ice nine? And Tara Hongo and all them. The cabinets. Dang, this must be the good stuff. They're all locked. Perhaps he's not as careless as you suspected. You like that his professional businessman office chair has some books stacked on it because he's like 10 years old or whatever? And let's see what else this bad boy has on it. Security system. Time card logs. Payroll. You know, for being so evil, this guy sure Solomon is boring. Once again muttered under his breath. Just you wait. Huh? I love Katy Perry. I'm a big fan of Katy Perry. Snake game, yeah. Somehow this thing seems to be running Skyrim. That's decently impressive, I guess. Looks like the founder was helping Kerr plan the festival. Why would such a secretive leader be obsessed with a party? Hmm, only time Luca will tell. Luca held his hand up to the ashtray. Hmm, it's still warm. You must have been in here recently. Like right before I saw you come out of here and ask no reasonable questions about it. Is that everything? Now I'm supposed to talk to him? Question mark? This child smokes? Well, I mean, he's like a 50-year-old, 10-year-old or something. Does that help? I'm really sorry you got dragged into this mess, Solomon. <laughs> you needn't worry about me. Well, I feel bad either way. We're gonna get you out of this. I promise. With a subtle, quivering lip, a smile crawled across Solomon's face. Oh. They heard the trampling of frantic footsteps from the hallway. It's like a, an abundance of footsteps and everything. Are we sure we're playing the right game? Lock it, lock it, lock it! What? It was close. When we left Nelly's office, it was swarming with clipboards. We barely got away. Did they follow you? No, I think we lost them. Rollo. Okay, before we start tossing blame around... Is it possible someone ordered a pizza? We'd love to hear your thoughts. It's definitely not a pizza. But also, it's pretty ridiculous they're still trying to answer survey questions. What now? Don't look at me, I'm officially retiring from the high stink business. We're so sorry for the inconvenience. We have just a few quick questions. Let me just think. Can someone watch the door? Of course. Everyone else huddle up. I'm sure this will be fine and safe. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal, Founder! Oh, Castle or Arg, you ordered the mushroom? Uh, I think that one's... Uh, the, the door dash says that's not gonna be here for another five minutes. I think this is us getting our comeuppance. Oh, I skipped past what he said. Solomon, no! Hush now, child. The adults are speaking. Dr. Modewill, a brief reintroduction is in order. We've never met in person, but we have corresponded. You see, it was I who hired you. Solomon, the pathetic orphan child. The powerful and enigmatic founder. Sharper, the fallen progenitor who created this town. Perennial Harvest, Valentine Fertilizer. He's just saying, like, buzzwords. Like, this isn't, like, a coherent speech. He's just like, Let me reiterate all the plot points you've encountered so far in this game. Also, smacking that melon dough. All connected by a single thread. Yours truly. Her eyes That's... searched the floor in thought. Solomon watched eagerly, waiting for the flicker of epiphany. 
pungent, crooked, hard. I sure hope we're not describing one object. It sounds like an unpleasant object. With a sickened look, she peered into his soul. <laughs> yes, now you've got it. Tempest Liquamine, you discovered how to reverse the Solemn process. clapped with genuine delight. Very good. There it is. Very good, Dr. Modewill. Very good. Not patronizing at all. Though the discovery wasn't intentional. Solomon glanced down, examining his youthful form. And, well, the effects went a little too far for my tastes. That's why you needed me to finish Dr. Prescott's work. Which you did admirably. Mr. Kerr, the vial, Kerr please. Kerr presented it with a theatrical twirl of the hand. May I present to you the eighth Before wonder of... Finish, Rollo snatched the vial from Kerr's palm. Got him, idiot. Wow, this stuff sounds pretty valuable. Be careful, you fool. You have no idea what you have in your hand. Actually, we do. You just did a whole evil villain monologue thingy about it. Actually, toss the vial to Luca. Gosh, maybe I'll have a taste. Luca tickled the vial mockingly. Seize him, Luca. Over here. They still have the doorway blocked. This isn't exactly a plan. Move another inch, and I she smash it tightly behind her back. Solomon sighed. Speaking in crisp, measured syllables. You have no plan. I'll smash it, I swear. Fine, risk killing us all. Or, if you're lucky, nothing happens. Then what? We capture you and grant you much less leniency. He pursed his lips with feigned sincerity. But I give you my word, if you hand it over now, none of you will be harmed. A deep uncertainty washed over Beck. I'm not saying that, like, tossing it to Beck was a bad idea. When I say, like, they don't really have a plan, what are they going to do? It's like, is he, like, like they're acting pretty smug about it when they still don't actually have an exit strategy to, like, get out of the situation. Like, if they at least had, like, a chance to make a run at the door and, like, get out safely, then, like, I could sort of see trying to... Get him off kilter by like teasing him but like just trying to be like i'll break it like solomon's kind of right like we we still don't have the upper hand we're just not immediately totally hosed you're a smart girl beck but there's no shame in being outwitted by someone smarter than you we both know there's only one way this ends is it is it a dance-off? She looked to Nellie shakily. With a dispirited nod, Nellie sighed in defeat. And then they play, like, Cotton Eye Joe, and we all do, like, team line dances. And s s someone else acts as the judge. Beck slowly approached Solomon. That's a good girl. I'm definitely not the villain. Don't do it. He's super definitely the villain. We can't show that jerk. I'm sorry, he's With right. Apprehension, Beck conceded. We get to eat donuts in the bathroom? We can only hope. It's where the donuts belong. Solomon pocketed the vial and brushed off his shoulder with a sharp flick. Go on, brush your shoulder off. Mr. Kerr, you have allowed yourself to be humiliated by a group of children report to my office tomorrow for a performance the review blood drained from Kerr's face uh, of course sir but first you have a speech to make trot out there and give me the introduction i deserve and don't forget to smile <laughs> yes sir And to think all of this is thanks to the efforts of Mr. Van Horn. I don't understand. How is this all because of me? No, Mr. Van Horn is your... No, actually, Dr. Van Horn is his dad, isn't he? 
I said, Mr. Van Horn, silly child. Dr. Walt, see? He's all like, you're so stupid. Don't you understand I mean your dad? And he's the wrong honorific title? Like, even I caught that. And I'm an idiot. <laughs> like, like, that joke doesn't work because his dad is Dr. Walt Van Horn. He's technically Mr. Van Horn. Like, he's the one who said the wrong thing, dingus. Your father was always a thorn in my side. I offered him an opportunity to be a part of something great. Six Flags Great Adventure, but the fool was blinded by righteousness. He was all like, Oh no, there aren't safety regulations and everyone will die! Fool. He even broke into my laboratory in an attempt to sabotage my Solon work. shook his head with gratification. But the universe has a funny way of correcting course. By meddling with a force he didn't understand, Walt showed me its true potential. As fate would have it, Luca, your father's dying act was to grant me eternal I life! The applause resonated faintly through the walls. Well, that's my cue. How do you know that's your cue? Like, in the other history where we heard that speech, like... I feel like the speech went on for like four hours. After the festivities and my subsequent ascension, I will return to deal with you all. Until then, I suggest you use this time to reflect on the magnitude of your failure. You three keep post outside the door. Well, crap. Can I steal something cool from his desk? No. Hey. I'm sorry, Luca. I did what I had to do. I know, it's just we were so close. I've got a feeling that eventually, Solomon will get what's coming to him. Time wounds all heals. I, I, I see what you did there. Well, time seems like seems like less of an issue for him now. What with the immortality and all that. Nellie was staring at the floor, deep in thought. Sorry, Luca. Give me a minute to calm my mind. I was so busy thinking about what I could do that I didn't think about whether I should do it. I was also thinking about starting some sort of theme park with genetically engineered dinosaurs, but that must have... That, that would have gone a lot better than this, I think. Can't believe Beck sold us out like that. I'm not sure she had any other choice. What well, now? Nah, what's the plan? I don't have one. Of course you do. You always have a plan. Hello. Just need some time. Hello, it's over. I'm lost. I guess I'll talk to Nelly again. Luca, there's something you should know. After Mr. Kerr locked me in that office, I had nothing but time and curiosity. I poked around a bit, hoping to find a means of escape, but I found something else. A note hidden behind in a false drawer. What sort of note? Dr. Prescott must have sensed his time at Perennial Harvest was growing short. So he left behind a letter with hope it would be found by his successor. It was a confession of sorts. He left it for me, but its contents. Luca, I think they were meant for you. Why? What did it say? It was about an incident with your mother. Dr. Prescott found her in his lab with a stolen keycard. There was an accident. She had been exposed to extreme amounts of Tempest liquid. The color dropped from Luca's face. Did she... Is she... She survived. Dr. Prescott decided to help her recover. He no longer trusted Perennial Harvest, so he kept her whereabouts a secret. Over time, your mother led him to reconsider the purpose of scientific discovery. Science is often at the vanguard of change, but that doesn't mean it's always right. He realized that no one should have control over something as powerful as time itself. I now believe that's why he began to intentionally sabotage his own work. And it cost him his life. And that's a reasonable conclusion, yes. Luca was overwhelmed with emotion. 
But if she's alive, where has she been? Where is she now? The only person I know is my grandmother, and I'm not aware of what dramatic irony is. A sudden explosion sounded from the hall. Chapter 8 What's funny is, like, right as the game said that, the car alarms started going off outside for the millionth time this week. I don't know what's going on around here, but, like, something just keeps setting off, like, every car alarm everywhere. There's, like, two going off simultaneously, which hopefully you can't hear. Come up in. Ears still ringing, Gran picked herself up off the ground. Through the dust and smoke, she looked over to see Mrs. Fratelli helping Hiram Tolliver to his feet. She'd had to beg, borrow, and steal to acquire those explosives. How many nights had she spent visualizing how she'd use them to make things right? And now, her one shot at destroying the source, that damned hole that swallowed so much of her life, was gone. Traded for this jagged hole in a wall and a foolhardy shot at rescuing Rollo. Hey, everyone. We did it. We got to page 69 again. Isn't that nice? Might be the last time it happens this game, so savor it while you can. I'm going to click on the thing again. Worth it for the joke that no one, no one will laugh at. and Oliver at her side, she stepped through. It was a strange feeling. The last time she'd stalked this maze of hallways, it was in a different body. They quickly rounded a corner to find a group of clipboards guarding a door. Something worth guarding is probably something worth seeing. She leapt forward, brandishing her cane. If her last chance at vengeance for things lost was truly gone, she would just have to fight to keep what she still had. I'm sure that was nothing. Who buzzed them in? Gran, what are you doing here? Luca, what are you doing here? We're here to save Nelly. It kind of worked. We're here to save Rolo. It's going all right so far. Hey, Miss Luca's Gran. It's awful nice of you. But I'm fine. Oh no, what did they... Gran, there's no time to explain. We have to go now. Come on, everyone, we've got a party to crash. They made their way out from deep within perennial harvest, just as Solomon finished up his speech. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from Solomon here on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. We gotta stop him. Unless that's actually antifreeze. Did we switch the vial for antifreeze? He could probably drink that and it would be fine for us. In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. No. Well, I guess that's it. We lost. I wouldn't be so sure about that. I think it actually was antifreeze or something. With a mischievous look, Beck elbowed Luca. Remember when I had the vial behind my back? Might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little... Um? Does this matter? Does this choice matter? I feel like change is probably the correct answer. And I don't feel like I can in good conscience end this game without choosing junk. I don't actually remember getting the junk badge. Does anyone remember when we got this? I legitimately don't. It might be the only one in the game that I don't remember. Choose the form of the Destructor. Well, I, I wouldn't want to choose Malice, that's for sure. When we met Jeff. And that seems likely, but I, I just can't, like, honestly picture it. Oh, and we'll have more junk in the trunk. We have to hope. It's our only hope. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little junk. It's a weird way of saying that is all. Can't wait to see the look on his face when he realizes he drank his own cigar ash. How did ash just get into the vial? It was pretty easy to miss to mess with the vial when it was behind my back. Oh, that's sneaky, sis. You'd be really good at Connect Four. Well, anyway, bad habit. Paul always says bad habits are like 50-yard field goals. Huh? Hard to kick. 
Ugh, God, that, that was really strained at best. You can call me Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. Did the cigar ash turn him into an exploded Looney Tunes cartoon? Oh, that's horrifying! I don't feel so good, Mr. Kerr. Okay, well, that's okay. Nice one way to kick a bad habit. As the last of what was once Sharper Valentine <laughs> wafted into the air, the crowd began to disperse, still numb from what they had just observed. No, Andrew, you're mistaken. Beck didn't do a murder. She did a really funny prank, is what she did. She, you can't be prosecuted for, like, a really funny prank, though. Like, you, it's, you, you can't do that, Sharper I think. Sharper Valentine was gone for good. Wait, you can do that? I have the worst lawyers. His end would be a new beginning for Beacon Pines. A new chance to let go of the things they had lost and grab hold of a new future. It's fine at best. Yeah, she did like a cat thing. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. The end. See, the game's gonna want to be in like a second. It's gonna be like, hold on. You can't do a murder. I'm gonna be like, listen, lady. That seems like a fine end. <laughs> well. I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a bit gratifying. If that feels to you like a good note to end on, I won't stand in your way. Let's see, might have tweaked the Wonder Potion with a little. I feel like Malice isn't it either. The start of the game said this is a story about change, which makes me think that this perhaps important decision is, is correctly answered by change. But I feel like Malice is going to do something maybe even worse than, like, snap him out of existence. So let's see what that one looks like. I might have tweaked his Wonder Potion with a little Malice. Are, are we sure it's not M M Malice 9? No? Malice? The whiskey from his office? The really conspicuously named whiskey? Bit into it and we get two backs. Multiball! Yep, dude had an unfinished glass on his desk. Figured his grow juice could use a little hair of the dog. It's funny because he's a dog, you get it? Do you understand the joke? You can call me Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. For some reason, I picture that he's about to turn into, um, from from the from like season three of JoJo, when they like meet that guy's dad in the attic, and he's kind of just this like mutant frog guy. I feel like that's I feel like that's what's about to happen. Hello, oh, Neko, and welcome to the stream. How are you doing? What did you miss? You missed the whole heist. But we're messing around with, like, a polyjuice potion, and we're doing bad stuff to Sharper Valentine. It's really funny. Let's watch. Something bad is about to happen, for sure. For sure, for sure. <laughs> that was very good. It's a good ending. I don't know what else, like, how is there more game after that? That's definitely the correct end of the game. Now that's what I call 80 proof whiskey. Is, what is this accent, by the way? There's an achievement for that in particular for some reason. Darn, man. The crowd gazed in stunned silence at the now empty stage. The quiet was broken when William Kerr sprinted off stage and into the distance. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. He was never seen around Beacon Pines or anywhere else for that matter again. Hey, Katillion, welcome to the stream. If it helps, I don't get notifications of like normal stuff on the stream anymore. Why is that be due? Why is that be due? Uh, oh, Katillion, thank you for the 64 month resub. That's many months. Um, I mean, I always try to keep to really consistent stream times because I don't trust those notifications. Um, although with Twitter dying, I feel like I need to set up, like, a 
like a stream alert thing on the Discord or something. We'll see how that all goes. Why does Rolo have a must? When did did you not see last week's stream? He got turned into adult Rolo. He 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 drank the Kool Aid and became an adult, and now he has a bad accent. I thought you were here for that. Um, but yeah, so now we're probably gonna have to like not murder Sharper Valentine, which is like a straight downgrade to like turning him into confetti. That was extremely Watching good. Watching the silhouette of Kerr disappear over the horizon, Luca began to laugh. First, a low chuckle that became uncontrolled, heaving laughter. And then we became the Joker? Through his tears, he was vaguely aware that the crowd had begun to laugh with him. <laughs> it's really dark. The end. Be a funny joke, Angel. Unexpected. As long as it's sufficiently funny, I don't think you can prosecute it. I think that's true. Perhaps a bit of an absurd ending for my taste, but who am I to say? Yeah, that seems really weird to me, too. I feel like it, it's weird to me that, like, even though you only get, like, a little bit of follow-up on either of those choices, it's, like, weird to me that, like, there's, a there's like, a distinct reaction to both of those when, like, they're really pretty similarly dark and confusing things. I'm only writing the damn thing. Wait, she's writing it? Didn't she earlier imply that she was the story itself and thus not also the author? That's confusing to me. Okay, so I, I made it a change potion. So is he going to turn into like a stack of quarters and then we're going to spend him at the arcade? I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little change. Like pocket change? Your unlucky penny! Yeah, I plopped it in the vial when no one was looking. Okay, now... I can imagine a world in which you dilute the color of a liquid he's basically never seen before and he doesn't notice. I.e. The, the whiskey or whatever. Like that? No problem believing that. I can imagine that the particles of ash are fine enough that you wouldn't necessarily notice them if you don't have reason to be suspicious of the potion, right? What I don't except is that she put a whole penny in that vial and he's like i'm just gonna drink this like a like a non-functional like animal struggling to exist i'm just gonna drink whatever's handed to me or something maybe it melted the penny if it melted the penny i have a hard time believing he could have safely drank it to begin with He says, the sheriff's helicopter is buzzing my neighborhood saying something over his PA, but the helicopter's so loud it just sounds like it's an angry grown-up from Charlie Brown. Ah, uh, that's... Wait, are you sure it's the sheriff and not Terror? Maybe it's Terror. It could be Terror? What was the other dark ending? Neko, are you at all familiar with Infinity War? Because it was basically the end of Marvel's Infinity War was the other one. Vinegar and salt will do that? Yeah, but I don't want to drink vinegar. That's like... That's also basically poison. Uh... What's, what's that gonna do? No idea. That's the beauty of science. Oh, okay. Well, as long as it's for science, that maybe also isn't prosecutable. But I'm less sure of that, since kind of the whole story is about doing that, actually. Now we observe. You can call me... Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. No, like, you know, like the very end of Infinity War when, like, Thanos snaps and, like, stuff happens? That very much literally happened to the dog boy. Holy crap, he's a baby! Yeah, but he's still sharper, right? What he was no longer matters. This is an innocent child. I apologize for all the harm my... Gosh, this relationship has become complicated. Father has Aeris caused you... awkwardly cradled the squirming child. She looked to her brother, her voice shaking with uncertainty. 
Augustus, what what do we what we we do what Valentines always do. What must be done? I'll hurry home and prepare a crib for father. I mean young sharper. Go on, prepare a crib for father. That would be a great help, she thank you. She looked back down at the infant with equal parts kindness and terror in her eyes. With a shake of her head, Eris addressed the crowd with a stern scowl. Okay, everyone. The show is over. You may leave now. Epilogue. He's definitely a shady guy. Definitely a shady Beacon friend. Beacon Pine's coldest summer on record came and went without much fanfare. Fanfare? I don't, I don't have enough opportunities to use this thing. I'll need to set up that new thing, and I'm mad about it. Folks shared what they had, and none were left wanting. The new school year was ushered in by the falling leaves of autumn. After everything Luca, Rollo, and Beck had been through, middle school was bearable. Hey, did we ever, like, make a good new potion for good fixing Rollo, or is he just an Australian man the now? The chill of winter didn't seem to bother people much. They kindled a hope for a better future in their hearts. When spring arrived, farmers planted their crops with a sense of joy and optimism. And as the dawn of the first day of summer came again, its light Ooh. slowly spread through the shallow valley. The dawn of the first day, like just that phrase is forever inextricably tied in my mind to Majora's Mask and it's not like a particularly good time is the dawn of the first day. I mean, like, there are worse times, but like dawn of the first day makes me think that like the world's gonna end in three days. <laughs> we blow him up again? Yeah, I, we probably can do that. Made it for the end. Welcome, Alcadius. Your timing is impeccable, assuming that that's what you wanted. Although, you did miss us killing the villain twice just for fun, because the game allows that for some reason. Beacon Pine sequel, Kill the Moon. Can you imagine if, like, a game just, like, really shamelessly did that? Yeah, Beacon Pines. It's kind of got, like, a time travel thing, so the second one might as well just literally be Majora's Mask. It crept over the town square, across the river, past Through the, the woods. neglected welcome sign, and came to rest to Grand a young Mom's boy house. sleeping at dawn. His mind at peace knowing he is here for a reason. He's gonna say he wasn't wearing a sweater, but then he put it on. Rolo, are you up yet? Roger that! It's a beautiful day at Mission Control. You gonna swing by? I'll be there in a minute. Check in with Rolo. Okay. Over time, Eleanor began moving Walt's old things out of the closet and into storage. Okay. Eleanor had moved back into her bedroom, and now that she wasn't sneaking out late, she even slept there most nights. That's weird. He just lives there now because he's an adult, maybe. I used kid voice because I assume that since we have the scientist who made the aging potion, we like fixed it because it'd be weird if we didn't why does this get more of an ending than confetti valentine i'm really confused about it neko to be quite honest with you i feel like clearly turning him into confetti is the good ending like how often like truly how often not only does the villain get defeated by his own hubris and the cunning of beck the best character in the story i mean like a, that's rare enough, but B, like, how often does his defeat in and of itself, like, herald his failure by being a celebratory burst of confetti? I thought this is stupid. The sink is still on, and the size box is still open. Luca, I'm afraid we have to move because you've wasted all of our money leaving everything running for several days. I want to poke around and see if there's, like, secret stuff. Sometimes epilogues have, like, secret stuff, you know? Is 
But maybe not this one. <laughs> You're not my mom. Oh, wait. Yeah, sorry. I kind of forgot. Things have been really complicated. Oh, there's like a, like a box of dad's stuff or something, maybe? Mom, I'm ready to go now. You go on without me. I guess we never figured out the aging thing after all. I'll meet you wherever the end of the game is actually happening. I've got a batch of jam to finish jarring. It's funny. I only started making jam as a way to send messages without anyone noticing. But now I enjoy it. I, is it still sedative jam? Is it... Are you, like, making, like, sleeping jam for people who have trouble sleeping? He just says, Neko told me to tell you hello. Neko, is that true? We should go visit Dad. Well, not really Dad, because we know that's not... Because they moved, like, the whole town. Oh. They move him back? I guess they move him back. I hear you and Rolo have big plans for that little treehouse. Yeah, it started getting crowded after we revoked the max capacity one Rolo, one Luca rule. So we decided to expand. But at least we got some help with that. How's the internship at Nelly and Alona's shop going? It's been great. I'm hoping it helps me get into the School of Agriculture up at State. You know, State. Also, Nellie said she'd write a letter of recommendation, which would be huge, because her handwriting is really big. It wouldn't actually mean that much, but it would be a huge recommendation letter. Just can't help but worry about leaving Rolo. He's grown up so fast, but he's still my little brother. Yeah, he had a heck of a growth spur. I guess, I guess we're really sticking to that, and it's weird. I don't just mean grown literally. This morning he was up and finished his chores before I even had breakfast. Well, some of that might be his excitement about the treehouse renovations. Don't tell him this because it'll go to his head, but I'm really proud of that little punk. I'm sure he feels the same way, but he's too dang proud to tell you. I know. Now we have two Rolos. What do you mean we have two Rolos? Don't we just have, like, one bad old Rolo? Hey, Gus, how's the tree planting going? Couldn't be better. I'm so grateful to Alona and Nelly for letting me help. I just wasn't built to be a mayor. Too much bureaucracy. Gus, we finished cleaning up the sidewalks. What's when next? When the perennial harvest collapsed, most of the clipboards skipped town. But some stuck around and dedicated themselves to making things right. Are the clipboards literally clones? We're, we're just not going to address that because it's like a cartoon. But, like, I have questions. <laughs> because of Limit 1 Rolo. It's the No Homers Club. We're allowed to have one. Anyone with a knack for art can help paint the new offices. You can count on us! Well, it looks like you really found your calling. I never really felt comfortable telling people what to do, which is why that seems to be what I'm doing now, I guess. Now this right here... This is something I could be proud of. You might be a clone, or your brother might be the clone. Let me ask you this, Alcatus. Does one of you have a goatee, and the other doesn't? How's the napping this morning? Most underrated part of a good nap is the view. The view's getting greener every day. I think that's like a, a mirror of what he said at the start of the game. I see you decided on a name. Yup, we had to clear out all the old stuff before putting on the final touch. Slow and Dirty Harvest is now official. Low and Dirty Harvest is now official. I- is- um... Are you married to that? 
Are you married to calling the company slow and dirty? I feel like people are gonna visit your website with the map to get to Bone Town. Yeah, they may be thinking that they're going to Bone Town, but like if they don't have a map, they might actually get to the wrong place. That's just I mean, at the very least we can hope that they're working on planting a second very big melon for completely unrelated reasons. I like it because I'm like a 10-year-old boy and like that's petas grandes. It's really funny to me. <laughs> Excellent work there, Alcadius. It's very well played. Actually, it was Nelly's idea. There's still a lot of work to do, and the name serves as a reminder of... Just because progress is important doesn't mean change should happen fast. In fact, I've learned about... learned that the more you care about something, the more important it is to take things slow. Our motto is, go slow and fix things. Ah, I see. A sensual harvest company with a suggestive name. That just must mean watermelon. That is my understanding of the Spanish language. Is there some reason that that would not be true? <laughs> Nego says, slow and dirty. I might get wet down there. It, there is some concern. I mean, I could go to the treehouse. Oh, come on. No, game, you don't understand. The screen with the watermelon's over there. But no, game. You fundamentally misunderstand what's most important about the story. It's for me to go over... I have to hit the melon, you see? I have to... Game? Did I really get all of the fishing and not get some sort of achievement? I really don't think I did get an achievement. Look at you first. Maybe if I talk to Dad, he'll give me a new one. Looks like we could use some new bait. What do you say we head out to find some more? Am I supposed to talk to you, dog boy? I don't remember his voice. I only used it once. Season has passed. The melon will have gone rotten. That's... I don't... I don't believe you, Neko! Who could get this? I managed to reel in an actual fish this morning. Seriously? Yeah, an honest-to-goodness flip-flopping, swim-swamming fish. I don't think I've ever caught an actual fish here. It's been at least seven years since I caught one. I'd say it's a good omen. What did you do with the fish? Oh, I released it back into the pond. I'm hoping to catch it again tomorrow. Wouldn't that be really painful and terrible for the fish? I understand how that's supposed to be, like, a, a, like a happy or like an optimistic thing, but like, that would be horrible, wouldn't it? That would be like a Groundhog's Day scenario being abducted by aliens and having, like, your face skewered. That seems bad. Also, did the game ever, like, strictly explain why there was, like, a weird, like, D-plot of the animals disappearing? Because, like, I know they were doing weird science stuff, but, like, it didn't seem like they were, like, for the most part, pouring liquid temp temp tempramine just, like loose into the environment like there was like one weird puddle of it which like kind of wasn't explained but like it didn't seem like it was suggesting that it was just like everywhere a little high yep a little low yep a little high yep I'm telling you, angle ain't the issue. Need more power to the radio. Nuka, there you are. Would you tell him it's not with the angle? Yeah, I'm not in charge of antenna redesign. Fine, fine. Iggy, just don't do anything drastic till we get back. Oh, me? Tis your in charge while I'm gone. Yep. 
I want like a Tish spin-off game. I just like Tish. It'll be fine, right? It'll be fine. If we really want Mission Control to turn into something bigger and better, we have to loosen our grip a bit. Ah, uh, you're right. Lead the way. Second with Beck at her house. Okay, it is mandatory that I have Rolo, but I can probably visit the melon now. Do you, hey, do you think that this game will end with a musical number where Kaniza and all of his friends... Oh, they got rid of the museum, that's funny. Uh, where Kaniza and all his friends like do like a choreographed dance routine despite all logic and reason? Do you think that will happen? See, Neko, the melon is completely fine, although it is still a bit lonely. Perhaps I can warm its spirits by doing this for a while. I don't remember like any of these characters' voices. Back for seconds. If it's not too much trouble, for the longest time, I didn't understand the appeal of ice cream. It serves no purpose other than to briefly be enjoyed, and then it is gone. Uh, it's pretty tasty while it lasts. I am inclined to agree. can you tell Roxy I'll be free in an hour? Sure thing. My dad's making me stock shelves for the summer. He said it builds character. I think he meant to say it builds calluses. I, like, you know what? I just, like, never settled on a, on a voice for this guy at all. He was in many scenes. Builds character! Yeah, it builds something all right. Luca, can I interest you in a delicious apple? Waggled an apple? No thanks, just saying hello. Well, hello then. No, not to you, to the melon. I was saying hello to the melon? The melon is far more important to me. Am I telling me, telling your mom we need a new crate of jam? Already? It's funny, I used to hide the stuff in the back. Terrified someone would find out about our secret messages. Now everyone just wants to get their hands on Eleanor Van Horn's... Famous spy jam. I think I think if we talked to this character throughout the game, they would like foreshadow what was going on in the story, and I just like haven't done it at all. Look to his friends with a thankful smile. After everything that could have gone wrong, everything that did go wrong, we made it. Closing her the eyes. The end. Miss Hatch took a deep, relaxing breath. Did she, like, fade away into the Aether and become, like, a Force Ghost? Don't have control. Oh, hello, Luca. How are you? Really good, actually. That's wonderful. Did I miss anything? I think you're pretty much up to speed. I get the joke. I'm not sure it's, a, it's like, necessary. Young Mr. Van Horn. How's little Solomon, um, Sharper doing? Young Sharper seems to enjoy nature more than I. So we do a lot of strolling these days. Has he, uh, you know, cut the cheese? Attempted to crawl out of his crib and plot world domination? Yeah, you know, like basically Stewie. He's basically Stewie, right? He's Stewie? Thankfully, no. I spoke at length with Dr. Modewill, and she feels that Sharper's infant mind was not developed enough to retain his previous memories. For all intents and purposes, the child is unmolded clay. Let's hope he's a little nicer the second time around. Hey, maybe we could call him Nicer Valentine. Get it? Because he's nicer than he would have been the first time? That is the objective, yes. But really, all I can do is try and hope. And also, like, faith and love and luck, or, or something like that. Two activities I'm endeavoring to find less distasteful. I think you're doing a great job, but I'm also a pretty bad judge of character, canonically. And the whole town is ready to help out however we can. Can't wait to teach to te teach him to throw a baseball. Really? That's your that's your takeaway? That's your takeaway of like the whole thing? Is that you want to grow up and play baseball with him? That's okay. Iris did her best to ignore the tears welling in her eyes. That would be. ACCEPTABLE! Wh 
what's today's news that needs knowing? We'll give you tomorrow's headline today. Our old friend Patrick C. Montesquieu, aka William Kerr, just performed a stirring rendition of the Iceman Kind at the State Correctional Facility. Here there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Well, I guess he's got plenty of time to work on his craft. Can I, can I go see Don? Let's get this out of the way first. I like clipboard. We'll say clipboard. Mrs. Fratelli glowed with a carefree smile. Did we have any endings where we turned Kerr into confetti? No, we only have one confetti ending, but we did have the Infinity War ending also. Uh, is that your suitcase? That is two weeks. Hang on. That's two weeks of unencumbered tranquility. Excuse me? Would you be so kind as to take my order? Two weeks of sand, margaritas, forgotten obligations. Excuse me, I'd love to place Mrs. an order. Mrs. Fratelli sighed with a zen-like calm. Just as soon as lunch rush ends, I'll be feather on the wind. And you're going on vacation for the first time in years. Got you and your mom to thank. Why's that? She didn't tell you? You two are going to fill in for me at the diner while I'm gone. Just like old times. It's fine. I'll wait. Oh, I can't talk to him anymore. I see. Aw, oh, sleepy bat girl. Yeah. I'm glad you swung by. More follow-up questions for your story? No, I got everything I need. Thanks again for that. I sent a draft of the story to a reporter in Capital City, and they offered me an internship. Of course they did. You're an amazing reporter. I don't know about all that. A story about a phony corporation that picked up an entire town of people and moved them to cover up a massive illegal mine shaft full of incredibly hazardous chemicals sort of writes itself if you really think about it. Just don't forget us when you become a fancy big city reporter and marry Superman or whatever. Capital City isn't that far away. I'm gonna have to come back from time to time to check in and see what sort of new trouble you've gotten yourself into. Sorry to disappoint, but my adventuring days are over. <laughs> we both know that's not true. And what makes you say that? Call it reporter's intuition. She's so cute. Oh no, Arcadia says the unthinkable happened in Pokemon. Mom has a bedroom. I don't even understand that sentence. But I have seen lots of video clips of the new game not working so good. Not doing like a, not doing its level best. Over the school yeah. year, Kato and Bert had become close friends. I don't, like, really remember what Kato's whole thing... No, Kato's the penguin. I guess Bert's the one I don't remember, the fox. Um... But did you know that? When they covered up the source, they found a new species of fungus. Yep, and they were studying it in the new labs. Did you know that? Beacon Pines is now the smallest town in the county. Yep, most of the population before perennial it harvest moved in. typically went on like this for quite some time. I don't, like, literally know who the other characters are, so that's fine. He's the bug kid. Is he the bug kid? You might be right. He might be bug kid. Hey, Mr. Nun Creed. It's kind of weird that in, like, the final resolution of the story, you're basically not important. Despite the fact that we kind of tried to build you up as, like, a pivotal character to overthrowing the evil corporation or whatever. I'm gonna go see my dad in a bit. You wanna come with? Even after everything Mr. I did, Nuncrate you'd still... His head. You really are your father's son, aren't you? I don't think I'm ready for that yet. Well, you're always invited. I bet he'd love to hear from you. I'll visit Walt in my own time. You run along now. Hey, what's happening here with the several rabbit children? Can I go in a store and steal his licorice? No. With perennial harvest gone, the transportation tubes were left unused. 
Come on, come on. No one is too big, no one's too small. For well, Jeff's wild I'm ride. I'm not completely unused. Just one piece of candy. For the ride of your life. Is so uh this part of the game is set in costume quest? Who's next? Me, 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 me. Oh, I can't do the ride. There were separate hitboxes. I kind of thought I could do the ride. That's the second time that there's been multiple hitboxes for, like, one epilogue thing. <laughs> Queuing up for the suicide booth. No, this is the bug kid, right? I think this one's the bug kid? I think the fox was just, like, standing outside the museum. I don't remember what his thing was. Guess what? Yesterday I saw Destiny's... A, a Dynasty's Titius. Dynasty's Titius. Um, is that like a like a fateful chest chesty bird? Like that's uh, it sounds a little bit like a like a bird, like a bird name, because those are all pretty titious. And that's good. Is that good? Yeah, it's great. I haven't spotted one of those in years. At this rate, Beacon Pines is gonna become the bug capital of the county. Fence still dangerous. It's gonna take a flower. I don't think it does anything, but I own it now. It's an Eastern Hercules beetle. Did you look that up, Neko, or do you just know that? Also, is it um, fate fatefully chesty or whatever? There's like a there's like a person or something back there. I think is that just like a weird. Gap in the tree branches? It looks like there's, like, ears to me. No, I think that's just, like, the background. But it looks so strange and suspicious. Luca peeked up at the beehive. It appeared to be deserted. Mm, that's strange. So that, like, doesn't factor into the game at all? That's fine and cool and good and fine. You looked up and recognized the genus name. Trying to learn taxonomy. That's interesting. Are you any particular reason you're trying to learn taxonomy? I have news I think you'll enjoy. This morning, I unpacked my last box. You're officially moved in! It's just a box. Let's not blow this out of proportion. It sounds an awful lot like putting down roots. Well, I guess it's better than sowing wild oats. You're gonna be stuck with me for the foreseeable future. I do have to warn you, most years aren't going to be as interesting as this one. I think I'll manage. Ready? Before we go, there's a bit of a surprise. Did she use Pepsi to bring my ancestors back from the dead? Big titty. Big titty. Thank you, Demolition. We went to... Uh, we got a tree? Oh, we got a tree. My mom's prepared this tree especially for you. They didn't have to do that. It wasn't just them. Just about the whole town pitched in to make this single tree. Don't exactly know how that works. So you can communicate with all the people on your reptile server without having to Google a hundred things a day. That's that's pretty legit. How are things on the reptile server? I know at some point you were having drama with like some really zealous like German woman. Is is that resolved to, to your satisfaction? Payment stalled way too long. It's still appreciated. I know what you were going for. Big Titty Beetle. I think that's I, that's the common name for that beetle that you mentioned earlier, right, Neko? We all owe you. It should do okay in, in the cold of old Beacon Pines. Alright, that actually answers the question. I wasn't sure if the implication was that we had moved back to the old town somehow. Because the tree and the grave were gone, but I guess they just moved them. He's Icelandic. I apologize. I misremembered that. I thought the I thought the woman you were talking about in the past was. Tetas grandes. Y yeah, you know. Los tetas grandes, which, as I believe we understand now, to mean watermelon, like like a like a large sort of like a watermelon. And thrive as things warm up. That's perfect. 
When you're ready, take Jeff's wild ride to Old Beacon Pines. Wait, no, but if if the if the, if our tree wait, no, hang on. There's a logistical error here. So originally our father was buried at Beacon Pines 1.0, and he had a special tree, and his grave was by the special tree. And when they moved the town, they moved the tree to the new location where they where they moved the grave to, but not where he was buried. They didn't move him, but they moved the tree and the grave to Beacon Pines 2.0. And I checked, and the tree is, and the grave are both missing from Beacon Pines 2.0, which they've established is where we are now. So if we go to Beacon Pines 1.0, there either is a tree there and we don't need to bring a tree, or there's no tree, and what happened to the tree? Like, what happened to the tree? Now, I know what you might be thinking, but Vasco, the mission objective is very clearly to go into the wild ride. And to that, I say, I don't think you've been paying attention to this playthrough very much good. I can still do this while holding a tree. I don't need a map to get to Bone Town. Eight o'clock, and that's insane to me somehow. Teaching, teaching the tree important things. True. It'll grow up to be big and strong now that it has a better understanding of how the world works. Big titty. Ah, you got it. Now that's a good looking tree. Being a special occasion and whatnot, this rides on the house. You're gonna wanna hang on tight to that little tree. It just sounds so painful. I don't know why they made that sound so painful. Okay, what happened to the original tree? This is it. I legitimately... I'm, uh, I'm concerned and annoyed that the tree is the gone. end I've been waiting for. <laughs> Honestly, I began to lose hope of ever finding it. But I'm, I'm also confused about the logistics of this. Are you the author or the story itself? Because you've implied both, and if you're the author, I feel like this shouldn't have seemed that difficult. But then again, we did play Jenny LeClue, and the author, like, really struggled with that story. But then you came along. I... I don't know exactly how to thank you. It's hard to explain how much this means to me. It's funny, now that our time together is finally ending, I'm at a loss for words. Let's just watch the end together. Time. A good little tree. We can decorate it for Christmas like Charlie Brown did. The best little tree. See, it just gets cockney like half the time. I don't know why. I don't know what it is in my brain that's wired like, yeah, got it. Australian is definitely exactly the same thing as a cockney accent. It's exactly the same and there's no difference ever. Thank you, children. This means a lot. Yeah, thanks for everything. Chucks only did what any super awesome best buddy would have done. We should probably give you some time alone now. You good? Yeah, I am. It's been a wild year. How are you feeling? Everyone keeps asking me that. I'm fine, really. Pa always says the only thing fitter than a fiddle is a cello. Be like a dang cello. Well, if you ever stop feeling like a cello, I'm here for you. Exactly, Castlark, you understand me. Right, oh mate, 20 quid for the shrimp on the barbie. That's definitely that's that's what my Australian accent is, is like that sentence in a nutshell. <laughs> I know, you don't even have to say it. You two make an awesome pair. Because one of you is very expendable and the other one has a future. Excuse me? We're a trio now. Yep. I thanks. It's one thing missing now that you're part of our group. M missing? Let me tell you a little story about a man named Anka Tommy. Oh, God. I won't be long. We'll be waiting for you back at the phone booth. Found the perfect way to start our summer. It's, it's getting a little more Australian. 
I feel like I need like a like a dynamic gauge like in a different corner of the stream that's like what percentage Australian I'm succeeding at. I wonder how much time I would need to practice an Australian accent to actually be any passable at it. You've got some good friends. And you've got a friend in me. I'm Randy Newman. I'm so proud of you. Your father would be so proud also of you. I know. Mom, can I ask you a question? Do you ever dream about Dad? Not a night goes by that I don't. Are you ever afraid you're going to forget him? Forget what he looked like? Forget his voice? No, because so much of him lives on in you. He loved that old tree, but I know he would have loved this one more. Because his two favorite people planted it. I'll give you two a moment. Me and the tree? Oh, no, I see. Never, I got it. Never mind. Hey, Dad. Dr. Modwell says that over the next few years, this place should warm up. So, you won't have to be so cold for much longer. I'm not sure that Luca fully understands what has happened to his father. I think I finally understand why you left that night. There were things you believed in. Big things. Las tetas grandes. Those beliefs were things that made you you. If you wouldn't have stood up to Sharper, stood up to what you believed in, you wouldn't have been the same person anymore. You had to go. That didn't mean you loved us any less. I might not visit you as much as I used to, which is kind of a weird concept because I actually haven't been visiting you, but like a blank stone somewhere far away from here. But I, I know you understand. Uh... Oh. And then it goes out. Or no. Ah. I got an achievement for that. Beacon Pines! I'm interested to hear what you think of it now that we've finished the thing. Now you're sad. It's a good, I mean, it's a good ending. I, I feel like, I feel like they did a sufficiently good job of earning some emotional moments at the end i like that it mirrors the beginning because you start i think you're talking out loud to the dad in the beginning i know you like come from visiting his grave so like it all comes full circle in a way that's nice it feels like really weird to me that they opt to have like the actual like canonical ending be the one where rollo becomes an adult and even though we have like a scientist who knows how to make the become the proper age potion we just leave him as like a 10 year old adult like the movie big and we leave our mom as our grand mom yeah i think that's i don't know i like i i don't think your position there is invalid demolition i i agree with the sentiment that like parts of it were disjointed again i feel like in some ways it it shares a problem with um the first somnium files game where the story is good a lot of the characters are good there's some i don't like but like it's i generally like the characters that person's name is meats are they a relative of arby's um but like i do feel like you know I, i've mentioned it a couple times now but just like the notion that like the game sort of forces like you don't have so much ability to choose where or when you go in the story that you can avoid getting like spoiled on like big plot twists before they kind of become big plot twists 
And, like, it's not the worst thing in the world, but, like, I do feel like it undercuts the excitement of some of those reveals. And I think it also, to some extent, serves to, like, make some of those, like, dead ends less exciting. I mean, like, just so many of the the ends to branches of the story end up being, like, and the whole town froze over. And, like, most of the time you don't learn anything that, like, actually helps you do anything. Like... You're just, like, forced to play through those endings to get a certain charm to advance a different part of the story. Like, like I don't want to, like, harp too much on it or try to draw a potentially unfair comparison to something like 999, which is clearly trying to do something different than this game. But, like, one of the things I like about 999 is that, like, you get information from the dead ends that helps steer you towards the right end. And, like, that game is sort of specifically at some level about, like, you, the player, learning from the failures of your character to drive the story towards the good ending. And this story doesn't necessarily need to be that, but, like, it does feel like after the third or fourth time that the whole town sort of just freezes over, that, like, I kind of lose my engagement with the story. And it's not like I totally tuned out of the story, but it's just, like... I like the story, I like the characters, I like the pacing and the presentation, like, there's a lot of things that this game does great. I like the concept of taking a, a narratively driven game like this and using, like, a choose-your-own-adventure shell. I don't think that execution was, like, perfect, but I think it was good. But, like... I thought we might get a post-credits thing. Um... And then it's like back to the start. Now, here's a question, though. Okay, I do have the whole tree. Um, well, we'll I, think, I think we'll do a revisit to these because they were fun uh, before we wrap up the game. Um, but just to wrap up that thought, um, I just I kind of just wish there had been like more diversity in the ways that the story ended and that the discoveries from those were more meaningful. Like, I... Let me put it like this. I think it would be more effective if, like, rather than, for example, having one of the branches before the final path, like, revealing specifically that Solomon was Sharper Valentine all along, that you learn something about the founder that, like, deepens the mystery. So you're, like, more invested in finding that out. Like, you learn something that's new information to you, but doesn't outright tell you who it is. And then you learn that it's sharper and that revelation then like puts what you had experienced previously in like a new context. I'm not saying that's like the easiest thing to do, but I'm saying like, I think that would be a better way to go about it than just like literally having you like watch him deliver an evil villain monologue about how he's been the villain the whole time. And then you play a part of the story where your character doesn't know that and is clearly walking into a trap and like you can't do anything about it. But, like, you have to already have that information even to, like, play the part where you're falling into the trap. Like, it just, it feels a little backwards. But, like, I still like this game a lot. It's very charming. The character designs are fun and interesting. Um, the overall story is good. Just very much like Somnium Files. It's not that I think the story is bad. It's just that I think it could have been tweaked to tell it in a more effective way that would like make it maybe like an easy like 10 out of 10 game for what it's doing although i think realistically just because the actual like game system is like it's like it's fine it's not great it's a fun idea that the execution's it's all right i'd, I'd give this game like a solid like nine it's really fun i like it a lot um i hope you did too but before we sign off with this game um Let's just revisit this very fun experience. So we just did change. We know how that turns out. It's a really long epilogue. You interact with people. You learn about a tree. It's all very good. But like, let's just let's just do both of these real quick. With a little junk. Can't wait to see the look on his face when he realizes he's drinking ashes like some totally normal thing.
You can call His me Sharper Valentine. Valentine. Every time with green smoke, win, lose, or draw. No one reacted to that. Like, it's just a totally normal thing. As the last of what was once Sharper Valentine wafted into the air, the crowd began to disperse, still numb from what they had just observed. Like I says, because you don't really get choices, it may as well have been a TV series. I like the art story and characters, but I wish you had more freedom to mix and match words. You get railroaded. Yeah, I mean, that's... That, I, I think that's a, a reasonable summary of my issues with the actual, like, gameplay mechanic. Like, it's not that I think it's bad, but, like, I, I think it's sort of, like, undercooked. Sharper Valentine was gone for good. His end would be a new beginning for Beacon Pines, a new chance to let go of the things they had lost and grab hold of a new future. The... I mean, we're definitely ending on confetti. Well, That's why we did that I, one first. If that feels to you like a good note to end on, I won't stand in your way. Okay, maybe just like, I don't know, like a little malice? I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little malice. Which is the name of the whiskey on the Grand Line. No, wait, that's not it. He has some whiskey on his desk and I put it in his potion. You his can call me Sharper and Valentine. His to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. It's just very good. It's just extremely good. But I do wonder why the whiskey did that, of all things. The crowd gazed in stunned silence at the qu he was watching first through his TV. That yeah, was none of that matters. Uh, perhaps a bit. I'm only writing the. Ray, yeah, confetti, confetti ending is definitely best. I don't know. I, I mean, I get that they want the ending to be like. Like a, a happy ending in the sense that, like, the good guys don't do, like, a bad thing, but, like, he's, like, a pretty bad dude. And, like, the, the notion that he, like, turns into a baby and will make him into someone better, like, it's, like, optimistic. I don't know. Should have done a stock cheer noise. Well, I think what they should have done is that, like, really awkward, like, round of, like, three people trying to applaud asynchronously. That, like, on one of the other branches, like, when the speech happened, it was sort of, like... Like, that was really funny. Like, I enjoyed that. And I feel like it would be an even fun... Like, a full-out round of applause would be sort of like, yeah, everyone kind of hated him. And, like, the silence is, like, a little awkward. But I feel like a couple people being excited about it and sort of pulling back is, like, funny. <laughs> it's like, oh. But I do... I like the... I like the underwhelming, like, sad clown horn fail noise. It's pretty good. Um, but yeah, that's Beacon Pines. I feel like that covers everything. I don't think I have much else to say. I like the game. I feel like it had a little more potential than it exercised, but at the end of the day, it's good, and I recommend it, and I hope that you like playing it with me. Like I says, you somehow managed to sound like three people clapping awkwardly out of sync by yourself. Fully work. I can I am good at do sound effects, maybe? Not talk good. No. Not talk good. Um, yeah, so, um, I mean, it's a little early to end it's the stream. So Might do, like, a quick round of something or other. I'll sort that out in a minute. For the purpose of this recording, I have been Big Vasco, and I am now in slightly higher resolution. I hope you enjoy. Uh, before we round this out, I think this will be the opportune time to... Yikes to... forever. Man, I don't... It shouldn't physically be possible to get those sound effects so close together that they form an echo, but you sure did that. Um, yeah, uh, b before we end the stream, we must locate the secret squirtle. Somewhere on the couch behind me, I have hidden a secret squirtle. Uh, if you can see a squirtle... Oh no, he fell down. I put squirtle... I put, like, little keychain squirtle on top of Squidbeard, and he must have fallen down. I hope he's okay. Where did he go? That's not great. Um... 
Well, yeah, if, this, if you can see it, it's not a secret squirtle, but that's no longer a concern because he fell down. Um, yeah, so I'll give you a moment to see if you can find where the secret squirtle is located, because, of course, to locate the secret squirtle is an omen of good luck for you in the week to come. Uh, I'm going to have some of this 100% juice apple. Ah, uh, but Neko, secret squirtle behind Big Lorenzo or Little Lorenzo? Because last week we got Little Lorenzo, who's perfect, and also we still have Big Lorenzo, who's also perfect. Under lobster. When you, when you say under lobster, do you mean under little, little big, little big, little, big, little, big, little, big, little, big? I put both of them up there because they're both good and cute and you should see them together. Okay, we got one vote for big Lorenzo, one vote for small Lorenzo. Katie's guess is underneath our reverse of bunny. Um... That's probably going to be everyone. I'm going to turn up. Let's hope this doesn't break my computer, which it could. Turn this guy up. It's surprisingly hot in here for what's well, not a particularly warm day. All right. Let's check it out. Uh, let's clarify. Thank you. Keychain Squirtle fell down. Fell down forward. Which is probably good. Um so, clarify for our Katie. So we got we got Neko's Drifloon. We're gonna sit. We're gonna sit. Perfect. There's Neko's Drifloon. Under that we've got Reverse Bunny. Look at that, everyone's behaving. That's very good. And then under that is Hans the Porcupine. Look at him in HD. HD. Unfortunately, that one's not a squirt. Uh, Echo guest finds Big Lorenzo. But hiding behind Big Lorenzo is our Big Hero 6 companion, Baymax. You can actually look in HD with your new computer. It's very exciting, right? 5K, 5K HDR 10 plus or bus. I mean, like, we later, like, this camera can do 4K, but, like, literally Twitch does not support 4K. I don't, I don't even think partners can do 4K. There's, like, no purpose to having a camera this nice. But it does look better, doesn't it? Also, like, really wasn't that... I can't stress enough that, like, if you ask me how much I would expect to pay for, like, a 4K webcam, it would be a lot more than, like, $136 plus tax. Uh, and then... Here behind Little Lorenzo. Just, I mean, just, he's... Look at him. Look at Little Lorenzo. He's perfect in every way. Look at his little feet. Look at his little mitten hands. And he's got his tail. He's so good. Um, but hi, right there by Lorenzo, our tiny lobster friend, is the secret squirtle. Congrats. I know, he's cheering on with his tiny pup, just like... Just like Carl. He's got that big hug energy, just like Carlos. Also, even in HD, I don't know if you could see him, but I put Tiny Carlos over there, and he's wearing a little pirate hat. He's wearing Neko's little pirate hat. It's extremely good. This is very good. <laughs> I'm, like, I can't, like... I, I basically got, like, a whole set of six little guys so I could have just Lorenzo, and it was worth it. It was completely worth it, because he's just the best. He's very good. Um, so, yeah, congratulations to Castle Arc for spotting our Winter Squirtle. 
Uh, thanks to everybody for watching and playing along. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being you. And I hope to see you again soon. Those of you watching live, we're gonna fill, we're gonna stretch for time. Don't worry about it. Uh, and yes, it was, it's the Logitech Brio 4K. Whatever the distinction, because there is a Logitech Brio that's only like 1080, but it's the Logitech Brio 4K. Um, but yeah, we'll be back tomorrow with uh, Lamplight City at the usual time, 6 p.m. Pacific. Next weekend is uh, like Thanksgiving weekend here in the United States. So uh, I will not be streaming uh, Friday or Saturday, just as a heads up reminder thing. I'll try to make that clear on the Discord and whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll be back tomorrow. I'm excited for more Lamplight City on Friday following next. Uh, I think we'll pick back up with Murder by Numbers and we'll see how that and Lamplight City go. I think I know the next replacement game for whichever one of those finishes first, which will pretty much definitely be Lamplight City. And then from there in the new year, I don't know what the plan is, but we'll sort it out then. Uh, but again, thanks for everything. It's been great sharing this game with you. I hope you've had fun, and I'll see you again soon.